Hello, welcome back to Chum and Son. Um, I'm Chum, this is my son. Uh, today we're going to be talking, you might have guessed from the title, but you, we're going to be talking about Assassin's Creed. Um, uh, yeah, just going to be talking about like the characters, a uh, little bit of the plot. We're going to try and reduce spoilers, but this is a pre-spoiler warning, so there may be like something. So if you haven't played the games or or if like if you're bothered about the plot, um, then some things might get ruined. But uh, if you're not too bothered or have played the games, then you should be fine. Uh, yep, yeah, that's about what we're going to be doing for this video. Uh, we've got some special mentions. Oh yes, yes, we have. Um, Come to life. We've uh, <laughs> we we've uh, we've had, we had another comment from Aaron Small, super fan Aaron Small. Thank you for that, Aaron. Just saying, keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. uh, Emma Crumby, uh, I think related to Fiona Crumby, I went to school with. Also made a nice mention of us. Uh, Taking roles from women, um, if 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 there was no women to sit certain roles in Hollywood and just cross dressing, which I like the sound of, um, so yeah, I'm prepared to wear dress as a woman to get mm. female roles in Hollywood. That's fine, and I'd love to be a female Doctor Who. That'd be fantastic. Um, uh, I'm trying to think who else has commented on our video in the past. My brother made a nice comment on there, <laughs> and so did my friend John Hill. So you know, we've had comments. If you make comments on on, on our video, we'll mention you because we you know we we care about our super fans. Anyway, over to Assassin's Creed. Okay, that was nice. So, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to try and keep it in order. I'm pretty sure I know the order of them, but like... I reckon yeah. Assassin's Creed's the first one. Oh, you are correct. Okay, so the first Assassin's Creed, uh, you play as a dude called Altair. Um, yeah, uh, like, I don't know. Uh, in my opinion, he's... I know he's alright. I didn't really play... I played as much as the first one as I could be bothered to. But I mean, after a bit, it was, got very repetitive. Uh, it just did a lot of the same thing, really. Good style of the franchise. Carry on. Yeah, that's just the first game. There's like 20 of these. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. Like, progress. you don't start out with like everything at the beginning as well. Like, well. I mean, you do. You start out with everything, and then something happens. They get taken away from you, and then you have to do these things and... For each task that you complete, uh, you get a weapon back. Uh, it's a bit, yeah. I think it's a good idea. It's it dated. It's last it generation. Stuff. Last last generation, I think. Possibly. Yeah. Um, but uh, where where are you based? Where's Altair based? Which country? Because they're very much about history. Yeah. These these games. To be perfect, this is why I'm interested. Uh, to be perfectly yeah. honest, I'm not entirely sure where Altair is based. Um, I think it's Jerusalem, mate. I think you'll find. Is it? Yes. Yeah, it is. It is it's in the correct. Holy Land. Uh, yeah, it's based in Jerusalem. Uh, they're very religious as well in uh, Assassin's Creed. There's a lot of, of religion, uh, but that sort of dies down a bit as the franchise goes on. Yeah. Don't um, be put off if you're not religious. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if you are, you might get learn something. <laughs> yeah, but um, also like I know that they they the first game sort of opened up this franchise. It was very good when it first came out because it was it brought in this new sort of type of stealth game. Um, like I don't know it, in the later Assassin's Creed games, which I think I mean it sort of makes sense, but like sort of blending into crowds, you can only blend into certain crowds because. You could like you'd sort of stand out if you like some guy in like a hood looking like an assassin, like standing in a crowd of ordinary people, you'd get spotted. But if you were standing in a crowd of say like, mm. uh, I think they're like bishops or whatever they are, they're in like white cloaks and they're walking around. You can blend in with them and like no one will suspect a thing. Mm. Um, how do you how do you assassinate people? Uh, you press uh, a button. <laughs> No, <laughs> what weapons? Uh, what basically, weapons are at the assassin's arsenal? Okay, so the weapons... The first game... I'm going to try and get this right. I haven't played the first game for a while. But, um... So, you, there's the typical uh, hidden blade. That How does that work? What's that all about? What's a hidden blade, mate? The hidden blade... Uh, so, you're walking around, right? Um, there's like a... I don't know. So, you got this blade. You make a certain motion with your hand, and it's sort of like on your wrist, so it sort of Schnitt. sticks out. Yeah, you sort yeah. of do that, and yeah, it yeah, like Schnitt. pops out. And then you can stab people with that, and then you put your wrist back, and then it just goes back away. You've got one, Tim. We should have bought it along. Oh. Yeah, I've got anyway, a phantom. He's got a phantom. Oh, it's, but, um, yeah, it's like a replica thing. It's pretty yeah. cool. I, I, but, um, I don't go with it, but it, it breaks. And it, well, it doesn't break, but it things shoot break. out of it. I'm like, ah, <laughs> then I'd spend an hour trying to fix it before he finds out. Yeah, I know how to fix it. But, um, so, yeah, uh, there's the Hidden Blades, which is basically your primary stealth weapon. Uh, you, you'd be using that a lot in the games. Uh, then you got, of course, your sword, 
that you use a lot, like for mostly for uh, hand to hand combat, but you can like use your hidden blade for like hand to hand combat as well as you can use your sword for stealth. But your sword is better for hand to hand combat and hidden blade better for stealth, I'd say. Um, but mm. um, also it introduced the counter kill as well, which is good. Where uh, it basically makes you immortal if you press certain buttons at the Ding. right time. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, but like, the, yeah, it just persists of like when someone attacks you, you counter it and then you kill them. It's as simple as that, really. Mm. Um, so yeah, uh, them did, you there was, did you say there was? Did you say there was another? Oh, sorry, carry on. Sorry, I'm interrupting. I'm just. You are. I'm pretending to be like someone watching it and thinking. Yeah. What questions also, ask, one thing it? I need to mention that I haven't mentioned yet. I can't believe I mentioned it. Basically, the whole plot is about uh, the whole plot the, about the Assassin's Creed series is about the pieces of Eden, which are like artifacts left Jeez. from. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Eden! I thought you said Eden. <laughs> <laughs> um, really? uh, but uh, yeah, pieces of Eden. They basically they're very powerful stuff. Um, yeah, they're like very powerful artifacts. There's three of them that I know of. Or four, technically. Uh, there's the Apple of Eden that's introduced in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah. And Altair, who's a character you control, he's uh, what is known as a sage, which is uh, something that, like, someone that is sort of half god, half not, if you know what I mean. Half oh, god? Uh, I thought a sage was when you were clever or something you had to run in. But I didn't realise it was that. No. That's a fair say. Yeah. Um, but, rooms. like, basically... How it's sort of explained is that uh, before, well, basically, like um, humans were originally created by these gods that enslaved them, and then these gods sort of got emotionally attached to some of them, and therefore had kids, which were sages, and um, wow. eventually the humans rose up and defeated them. They defeated these gods somehow, uh, but yeah. That's, that explains how they climb onto the ledges without getting spooly on. Yeah, because yeah, they've got god powers in them. Yeah, we go. Sort so of. didn't know that. Um, There's a thing called the Animus. Flynn, what's that as well? Is oh, that yeah, in the, the first Animus. game? Well, it that, is, that yeah. confuses me. Does it? Well, it is actually. It is a bit confusing, but basically... Okay, so the Assassin's Creed series, it takes place in the past, but also the present as well, if that makes sense. Basically, you're a character in the present world called Desmond Miles, who goes in the Animus and becomes Altair for a certain like period of time and sort of reenact stuff there's a mind um, yeah but yeah um uh, like it turns out that desmond miles is related to altair this assassin and uh yeah and like basically he sort of gets recruited by um abstergo who like who basically invented the animus and they therefore uh control like i don't know they sort of they're looking for the pieces of eden and can they go yeah. back you know like when they go in the animus are they, can they change time in the animus or is it just an exact replica of what they're doing it's a replica of what they're it's doing an exact replica isn't it I think yeah yeah uh, pretty sure um, and it also gives a lot of Ubisoft a license for the game because it's a game in a game it's really confusing but yeah. I always thought if the game's buggy it's because it's a game in a game of a game yeah also it makes it's sense because there's like limitations as to where you can smart. go very smart. and it's like you can't go here because his ancestor never went there uh, it sort of makes sense um, but uh, yeah that's sort of the first plot oh yeah there's Templars as well that's who I need to mention they're basically the antagonists of the game they're like a massive organisation and you are part of the assassins as Altair mm-hmm. and the Templars are like the bad guys really you just uh, work your way and just kill as many as you can in the Assassin's Creed games really normally for a reason for like revenge or in the first game it's like a contract Sort of, but in the end, it sort of becomes like a passion, like a thing that you want to do. Um, so yeah, that's the first game. Uh, I mean, almost ten minutes. We've only done one game, uh, but I okay. feel like, I feel like I've learned a lot in this ten minutes, though. Flint, so carry yeah. On. Uh, so next game, Assassin's Creed Two. Uh, there's still modern day stuff with Desmond Miles. Um, Assassin's Creed Two. The assassin in that is Ezio Albatore who basically he's this uh, Italian dude who he's very charismatic he's the first like charismatic assassin um, and the last and, one in my opinion but anyway Gary. really? <laughs> um, I don't think so but no. uh, yeah so um, yeah there's Ezio who 
basically, he has like a very rich family, and he comes from like a very rich background. Um, but uh, this is another spoiler warning: is like his dad is and his two brothers end up dead. Um, uh, they are killed by Templars, and it turns out that Ezio's dad was an assassin, and so Ezio puts on the assassin hood and trains to be one, be an assassin, um, and then goes out on a revenge spree, pretty much, just trying to get revenge for his family. Who trains him over, uh, is it other, is it uh, um, other assassins? Basically, he gets training, I don't know everything about it, because that, to be perfectly honest, I haven't played Assassin two, Assassin's Creed 2 very much. Um, although I've heard it's a very good game. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how he learns to free run on parkour and that. I think he just sort of knows that because he's a kid. So he's sort of like, I don't know, he's sort of been brought up. He's been do- he does a lot of like tasks. He's sort of like a courier for his dad. So he sort of runs here, there, everywhere. Like delivering messages and that. Fair enough. Um, and... He sort of learns how to fight from his uncle, uh, his uncle Mario, uh, the one who jumps and hits blocks with his head and gets coins from him. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he learns how to fight from him, I think. Uh, well, it's him and also his, uh, his older brother as well, uh, sort of teaches him how to fight a bit. Mm. Um, and he learns how to sort of stealthily hide in that because of, I can't remember who it is, I think it's like his mum's friend or something like that. Uh, I think it's like a friend of the family, but he sort of learns to sort of blend in, blend into crowds and like pickpocket and that from her. And uh, yeah. <sighs> Why didn't my uncle teach me these skills? They taught me how to drink and stay up late, not sleep till Those are skills. Day. That's what no, Ezio really. does. I'm pretty sure. He drinks alcohol. No. But also, but yeah, one of the things. That's what my uncle's taught me. Yeah. One of the things, like, he gets. Good on him. He gets his hidden blades as well. Well, I mean, he gets his hidden blades, but they're very, like, they're very broken. Like, they're very damaged because his, his dad sort of retired as an assassin. Uh, and they sort of went into dysfunction his, uh, his hidden blades. So, Leonardo da Vinci, who's a friend of uh, his mother, um, helps him out and fixes him and that. And mm. throughout the course of the games that Ezio's in, sort of helps him out and gives they him stuff. They have historical characters, didn't they, Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci? You mentioned of... a few, because I know there's a few in that French one, which you'll probably cover in a bit, but yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. Mm. There's um, others with Ezio, and isn't there's other games? Yeah, there is. Ezio. I'm getting on to that, but like, yeah, Ezio sort of has a basic like that as well. Sword. He has hidden blades, sword. He has like throwing knives. Yeah. Also, he has throwing knives as well. Uh, mm. I think Ezio gets a crossbow in that game as well. That's pretty good. Um, I think he has like a hidden gun thing as well. And I'm not entirely sure how historically accurate that is, but yeah, I think they had muskets around the time of Ezio. I'm sure they had muskets. Yeah, I'm trying to think when that was. I can't remember. Mm. Doesn't matter, does it? It's a long time ago. That's good to check. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's sort of Assassin's Creed Two in a nutshell. Uh, then after that is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. It's sort of like after the events of Assassin's Creed Two, he sort of finds this place in Italy. He finds Rome. Uh, I think it's Rome, um, and he sees that it's under control of these, like uh, under control of more Templars. And he's like, "Yeah, I don't like Templars." So he goes out and kills them. And um, also, that game introduces uh, like other assassin. Like uh, you sort of become like a master assassin after um, Assassin's Creed Two. Yeah, and um, you become an assassin. Like you, you sort of get to recruit assassins and like train them and that, and uh, send them on missions, and they can help you out. Like when well, you're in the open world. Mm. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, there's that sort of system is introduced and it sort of carries on with more stuff. Um, I believe in Brotherhood, that is where Super Mario dies. Um, mm. Yeah, he sadly gets killed. Did you get upset when he died? Not really, I didn't know him from the from the Assassin's Creed 2. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> oh, and then I had a little go at Assassin's Creed 2 and I was like, oh, that's who it is. Um, You've not sold these games so far because you haven't really played them all the way through. But nah, well, that's only the first. Two. The rest I have. Yes, played the others to death. I've, I've been played there and seen death. it. So you know. Um, I yeah, don't even think he doesn't even like these games. Yeah. Yeah. Assassin's no, Creed Brotherhood does. is the one that down. Assassin's Creed Brotherhood mm. like my, was like my first Assassin's Creed game. I was playing that and I played that one for quite a lot, quite a while. I completed it in that. Um, yeah. But uh, there's not really too much to Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. Although it's a very good game, uh, it, it's done very well following Assassin's Creed 2. 
Uh, so yeah, after that, there was Revelations. Um, Revelations, I think, was pretty good because it introduced the hook blade, which was, like, something that... Like, there was, like, zip wires across uh, the map that you could, like, uh, uh, grapple and, like, zoom, uh, swing along, sort of. Mm. Um, and also it introduces, like, den defences and that, which are which are pretty good. Um, what else? Yeah, well, yeah, the, the plot of Revelations, basically it's the same as Brotherhood, really. It's sort of, like... Um, like he sees Templars and he's like, right, I'm gonna go kill them, and uh, yeah, so that's sort of the plot of Revelations. Um, then the one after Revelations uh, comes Assassin's Creed Three. Assassin's Creed. Oh wait, no, Revelations. I forgot to mention a few things. Revelations. That is the last of the Desmond Miles sort of era. Yeah, so he no more Des. in that one, Desmond Miles uh, dies. I think. No, that's in three. Um, Desmond Miles is on a, goes on a bit of a lead to find some stuff, uh, find the pieces of Eden and that before Abstergo does. Um, and also in Revelations, you also control Altair a bit, so that's sort of the end of Ooh. Altair, so you sort of see him finished off, almost. He's, mm. he's like, so... Yeah, flip between the two, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you sort of flip between time. the two. Like, it's like, it's like it's predominantly uh, Ezio, but you do control Altair in little bits, and you sort of see him aging throughout that. And yeah, mm. so um, if I had an animus, I'd go uh, and I'd go back to uh, Lion Kick a dinosaur. Anyway, <laughs> carry on, mate. So okay, um, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's Revelation sort of covered. Um, also, the Apple of Eden is appearing in these games a lot. Um, yeah, like it's appeared in basically all of them because Ezio is always on the search to find it or like, or has got it and is defending it and that that sort of stuff really. Um, and then after after Revelations comes Assassin's Creed Three. Uh, Assassin's Creed Three. All right, so that one is one the as the assassin in that one is Connor Kenway, and um, Connor is he's like a Native American. And so it's set in, like, America, like, towards the beginning of when it was, like, sort of... Uh, it was sort of set during the... Um, what was it now? Like, basically when uh, the... Um, like, American people wanted independence from England. That's sort of what it's about. Uh, the American Civil War. So it's during then, and you're, like, a Native American. But, like, one thing I don't like about Assassin's Creed 3 is that, um, like, it goes on, like... Through half the game, you don't actually play as Connor, you play as his dad, yeah. uh, Hathen Kenway, who is an assassin, or so you think. Um, and uh, yeah, you sort of recruit in other assassins, or so you think. And it turns out at the end of, about the midway through, it turns out that he is a Templar, and he's a bad guy for some reason. I mean, I don't, I don't really know why they did that, to be honest, why they didn't just start him out as a Templar at the beginning, because... Nothing yeah, really so would have happened. Like it's it's to to give you a surprise. Yeah, I mean that's one for Assassin's have called Creed that one 3. Revelations. Like, oh. Also, yeah. like that's the thing with Assassin's Creed Three. I'd say it's one of the worst in the franchise, mostly because it's it's like you don't connect. You don't really connect with the main character Connor. Like he's really boring. Like he has no emotion, and I uh, I mean though he does have determination and that it all. Um, you don't yeah. like this one let's talk about the next one this is your yeah. favourite let's talk about that one uh, what Liberations uh, 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 you don't have to do two <laughs> if you want to talk about them as well okay there's Liberations as well Dude, we're covering everything alright um, it's really 20 minutes now yeah <laughs> um, so. but yeah so Liberations you play as Aveline de Grand Prix. I had to look that up before that because I couldn't remember I haven't really played I played it he didn't play it I played that one yeah I did play a little bit but not much um, mm. Yeah, I don't know. There's not really much to say about it. Bas well, I mean, Aveline de Grandpa is the first uh, black assassin, which and she's female. Good. Yeah, it's a woman, uh, yeah. woman black assassin, which is good. She's fantastic. Very good, as discussed in a, a diversity video. We like that stuff. Um, so yeah, she's like the first uh, black woman assassin. Isn't, I don't really know too much about her, so I'm just going to move on. It's very similar to the one that you played the other day, where you free, free, uh, yeah, free, free and slaves from America. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So yeah, after Liberations comes Assassin's Creed Black Flag, 
which is probably my favourite Assassin's Creed game. Although, one bad thing about it is that it doesn't really feel like an Assassin's Creed game, and though I'll give it really high ratings, it's not quite hit the perfect game because it doesn't feel like an Assassin's Creed game. It feels more like a pirate game than anything. It's brilliant. Um, it's, it's really good though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would definitely recommend getting it. Ships and stuff. Yeah, you sail ships and yeah, fight ships. as a pirate and that. It's good. And you're on the sea. Um, you're on the seven seas. Yeah, in the, so yeah, that's set in the Caribbean. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you you sail the Jackdaw, which is a ship that your, that your character Edward Kenway has. Edward Kenway's like a pirate and uh, basically he... He's from Wales, see? Yeah, he's from Wales. But, like, he doesn't really know anything about the Assassins or the Templars. And it's only when he... Like, at the beginning of the game, uh, he sees an assassin and, like, sort of takes his outfit and that because... Um, and he's, like... Yeah, he sort of takes his outfit and steals his identity almost, sort of... Because he knows there's a big reward in it and uh, he sort of wants a reward. And then he goes and sort of gets the reward, but... Uh, turns out that he ends up like helping the Templars, and he's like, these people are very bad. But also, he's like, he is about the Observatory, which is sort of. I mentioned the Artifacts of Eden. This is sort of like that, but a place and not an artifact. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, you go, you find that, and yeah, you defeat the Templars. Yeah. Uh, you can also like develop like a fleet, which is really good, like a fleet of ships yeah. you can send on missions. Um, <laughs> you like the cutscenes, don't you? That you can have. That every once you take a ship, uh, once you take a ship, you can like repair your ship, uh, lower your wanted level, or send it to your fleet. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I really it's, enjoy it. It's a very good pirate game. Very because good on the back game. of that, Ubisoft are going to make a pirate game with the same mechanics, but just a pirate game, just on the back of that. Yeah. How good for them. Which oh, I'm know. looking forward to. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, the next one is Unity. I, no, not Unity, sorry. Uh, that's after. Uh, the next one is Freedom Cry. That one you play as Adewale. I only finished it, like, yesterday. Um. But, uh, yeah... Uh, we were, like you play as Adewale, who is the sort of quartermaster to Edward Kenway. So you sort of get to like see him in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and then like he sort of goes off at the end to join the assassins, and then you play as him in Freedom Cry, to like I don't know you, you, where you're freeing slaves essentially, and it's basically it's it's just like Black Flag, mm. but it's a lot shorter story. It's it's very quick story, and it's like. Uh, I don't know, it's very like. Uh, well, it sort of focuses more on. I don't know, like, Adewale is a very, he's a very good like assassin. I think he's a very good character because it sort of show he sh- he shows a lot of emotion and passion towards like freeing the slaves and that. And there are points in it where like he can't and he just has to let them like die, sort of. And mm. and yeah, and he feels like really bad about it and. Yeah, it's it's a very like moving story, um, but yeah, I mean, aside from that, it's a very good game. Like, mm. yeah, um, so yeah, well, there's not really much to say, much more to say about that. It's a very short story, and it's it's sort of set in the same area as Black Flag, but a limited off more limited area. It's basically like um Assassin's Creed Black Flag DLC. That's sort of how I thought of it, um, and then after that. There was Assassin's Creed Unity, which <laughs> Assassin's Creed Unity is the buggiest game known to man. It's very like there's a lot of glitches in it, and they sort I think like Ubisoft sort of rushed it because they sort of wanted to keep that one year um, like Assassin's Creed game going like for as long as they could, um, and yeah, uh, when they released it, it was like everyone was like this is. Terrible. Where was this one set? Was this, this was one set, set in France? It was set in France. Yeah, it was set during the French yeah. Revolution, um, and yeah, it, it was made with the idea of like having more like better online stuff, like online missions and that that you could do, which I really enjoyed the online missions. I think it, I think they were good. Uh, I enjoyed like working with other people and that, and, like communicating with them to help out. Um, but it was not great it was a bit laggy and uh like connection was hard to get sometimes and mm. it's just one of them really like 
Yeah, and, uh, and um, you, you get to control a guy called Arno. Yeah, you, you can try to you could control Arno Dorian, who is just a French dude who suddenly knows how to perform assassinations and knows how to kill people. It's a it's bit just, like it's that. It's the same thought, with they do it in four. I've got to show him my eye from the. I'm just going to shut the blind. Okay, I'll carry on. Yeah. But um, so yeah, there's like a lot of that, like uh, in the Assassin's Creed franchise. I sort of forget about all the training and that. Um. I mean, in Assassin's Creed Unity, they don't even have any excuse for it. In 4, at least, it was like, they sort of gave an attempt, and they, were, they said, like, that um, they like he could free run because he worked on a ship, and, like, you have to get to some awkward places sometimes, and that's how we know how to free run. But, I mean, mm. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not buying it. Um, so, yeah, Unity, the plot as well is basically, think of the plot of Assassin's Creed 3, it's just that, but, I mean, they took out like playing as your dad for the first half of the game you don't do that you play as a kid for the first mission um, oh. yeah and you steal some apples oh, I, remember, um, I remember watching you yeah, yeah. but um, mm. so yeah that's like the first bit but it's like I don't know the plot is very much similar to Assassin's Creed 3 in the sense that it's like you got to avenge some people like you avenge people um, and yeah that's really it <laughs> yeah and um, your character like also for a game that's set in France, there's an awful lot of British people. And also, the company that developed it, Ubisoft, are based in France. So, you'd think that they'd have some French got, voice actors for that. Bless them, that got a lot of criticism, that particular game. Because of the way they treated the French Revolution. There were things that the, the French didn't like about that game mm. as well, which is, just makes it even worse. But yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah. Eh? Yeah, right. just uh, unbelievable. Just yeah. you know, but um, so yeah, that's that's unity. Oh yeah, uh, you find the sword of Eden in that, yeah. uh, which is basically the uh, what one thing I don't like about it. There's better swords in the game than the sword of Eden. Is there? Yeah, there is. You can like, I think there like you earn them on like Ubisoft Club on that. And, like hell's bells, that's ridiculous. That's one thing about like Ubisoft. They want you to join Ubisoft Club, and that's it. But they're criminals. I can't believe that. that there's like criminals. There's, a, there's swords, weapon. There's weapons that are better than um, than an artifact made by gods. Mm. So, you be the criminals. We've got a yeah. trivial pursuit game, and it's really like <laughs> Oh man, that's funny. it's just like it's been made like. You can imagine the programming. Like, yeah, well, when we saw it, you only when they do it. When we saw it, we, we don't like, love it. It's a quiz game. Yeah, so we're like amazing. Ubisoft. We're like Ubisoft it's made this. They've made like proper games. <laughs> They made proper games. They made a trivial pursuit game, which is not very basic. It's just a trivial pursuit, you know. But God. it's just a quiz. That's really it. But um, we're going off yeah. topic. Sorry. Anyway, anyway, the next, the next Assassin's Creed. Um, thing, after Unity, I believe. Yeah, Assassin's Creed Syndicate. That one, they sort of redeemed themselves because Syndicate was very good. Um, this one, they introduced the sort of grapple that they have. So if you're on like, I don't know, if you want to get up a building fast, you can just grapple yourself up like Spider Man. But I mean, though that is unrealistic, it was very fun. Like, it was very good to use and that. Um, and you, you get to ride horses and that. You like, like, you crash yeah, into you ride them, like chariots. Really strong. You ride like horses, horse chariots ridiculous. and that. Um, horse carts. And yeah. yeah, you can just ram into people. The mechanics of like the driving sort of felt a lot like Sleeping Dogs in a sense. Um, another game. Yeah, another game that we, we were discussing. That earlier. It's very good. Um, but, uh, yeah. Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate is very good. Uh, you play as these two characters. They sort of pulled the GTA with this one, like GTA V, which is where you like because in in what they did with GTA V was like they made a character for each play style that you do as. So like they made a driver, a marksman, and a maniac. Um, whereas in this one they made a stealth character, which is Evie, another female assassin like I had, and uh, you had your sort of aggressive like killer person who was uh, Jacob who just basically he was all about like fighting and that and whereas he was all about like stealth and like thinking things through and um, yeah these two were the Fry twins the surname was Fry <laughs> um, so yeah that's about that's about all there is to do with Syndicate oh, and you're located on a train which can be a bit hard to get to sometimes with that if you don't use fast travel but um, yeah uh, that's about all there is for Syndicate um, I think that's the most recent game uh, after Syndicate well this year this is 2017 they haven't released a game um, this year 
or no, uh, they're going to release a game ne- this later on this year. Either. They are, yes. Uh, they're going to release a game later on this year, but they didn't release one last year, which was a, dis- a which was a decision made by Ubisoft because they were like, we want to get this right. Like they didn't want to make the same mistake as they did with Unity, which was rush it and just get it all completely wrong. They're they're taking the time, and this is this is Assassin's Creed Origins. I de- definitely suggest you have a look into it because it looks completely different to every single other Assassin's Creed game. They've added like more. RPG sort type of stuff into it so like oh. not RPG is in the bazooka RPG like RPG is in role playing games so like they've had like leveling up systems and sort of upgrading stuff um, like I don't know just like you can make yourself better and like I don't know like so at the beginning you can't like instantly kill someone you've got to like work your way up you've got to get the right materials and the right like level and that to to then instantly kill someone. So you're not really as overpowered as you are. Oh, it's angle guard. Well, that does matter. And also, they've sort of done the combat. Mm. I mean, though I haven't played these games, I've heard that they've done the combat very similar to Dark Souls. Um, oh, yes. In the sense of, like, you're sort of, like, targeting on and sort of, like, I don't know, having to block and dodge and then attack and that sort of stuff. Yeah, they did it in The Witcher as well, The Witcher 3. Which yeah. I'm all there. I'll harp on about at some point yeah. in these videos. Um, Jolly good game. Yeah. Um, what else? Uh, yeah. That's about it, really. Oh, yeah. And also, it's set in Egypt as well. Uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. What do you like the most about these games, Flynn? What, what's it? Because I know you, you play these like loads. You yeah. play them loads. I'll what's play the them one? Time. I know they, 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 they're not as violent as you'd think, even though they're about assassins. They yeah. are quite violent. They are, but like... Too much. I've, I've seen worse. Too, they're not too bad. Um... What, one thing I really like about the Assassin's Creed games is probably like the sort of easy stealth that there is because like it's quite easy to pick up the stealth in those games and like it's sort of very forgiving in that sense and I like feeling like I'm doing something good but like it's like easy but not easy to the point that you can just walk up to the guy and kill him like you do have to think things through sometimes yeah. before you do it although there are some things like I was discussing this earlier like some assassination missions, if you get close enough, you could just shoot them in the head and that's it. Um, but, like, there are some where you have to, like, properly like, get yourself onto the, the right roof to then, um, like, assassinate the right guy. Um, yeah. So we both like stealth. I love stealth. I love stealth in games. Brilliant. When you're not a stealthy person in real life, but then you can play a game and be stealthy, it's fantastic. And, uh, yeah, they, they do. I, I watch him play them and they're great. I've played a couple of them myself, like Black Flag and that. And, um, and uh, I think I, I think played two, and they were, they were really good. They played a uh, Brotherhood. Brotherhood. Mm. I think they did play two once as well. Did that was when you were a yay top. Mm. I think can't remember, but yeah, yeah, I I, I, I liked them. I thought they were really good, really mm. interesting games. And there's this his, this history in them as well. They you know they teach you a little bit about history. Yeah, it's they're amazing. like a lot of historical figures in them. So yeah. like in Syndicate though, like that well that one's based in London. I think yeah. I've got to mention that's based in London, in London in the yeah. Industrial Revolution. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, in that one, you get to meet like Charles Darwin, Charles Dickens. Uh, do you think they'll do one in present day or possibly in the future, like where you've got laser guns and stuff? I don't think they'll do one in the future, but present day is a possibility. I mean, but, but maybe... Actually, I, I don't mm. think so now that I think about it because the present day stuff, they've sort of gotten rid of that progressively. Like, I'd say... They seem to be going back, don't they, with this Origins one? They're going yeah. backwards. Yeah, well, this is, like, Origins is about the beginning of the Assassin's Order. So yeah. they've sort of gone throughout history and then they're going all the way back again, mm-hmm. um, back to ancient Egypt. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. I'm not going to do one in Birmingham, you see, Assassin's Creed Birmingham. Birmingham. <laughs> one Assassin's in Birmingham. Creed. Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, that about wraps it up, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, thanks for that, mate. Anyway, mm-hmm. a, they're, they're very, very, very good games. And like I say, there's history, there's artifacts, there's there's, there's, there's all sorts in them. There's there's the locations. You know, there's locations. Yes, there's there's mm-hmm. all sorts in them. They're very good games. Developed by the the criminal minds of Ubisoft. They are criminals. They ask any game, and they're like they just, they're just yeah. but they make good Not games. Not as bad as EA. No, as bad as EA. We'll probably get sued now for mentioning that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, I'm sorry, but. You know what? They make really good games, but they're obsessed with DLC. Also, they really want you to join Ubisoft Club. Like yeah, that is their ultimate goal. Whenever I play a game, now it's like join the. I don't want it's to like join it. Ubisoft Club. It's like, oh, I'm not a joiner. I know. Yeah, I, I've had to join Ubisoft Club now. 
Well, we are um, now, aren't we? We're both yeah. members now, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. And like, like we just, just had to in the end because I just remember you and I remember, game you're playing. It's like I remember I was playing uh, Tom Clancy Ghost Recon, I think it was, and it basically forces you to join Ubisoft Club. You can't play the it game does. if you don't yeah. have Ubisoft Club, which yeah. I think is a scam. Cheeky monkeys. But yeah, it is a good game. Yeah. But, um, but I'm glad they're taking the time in this new one. Uh, yeah, they are, and it looks like they're doing it completely differently. Like they good, mm. good. I, I'm sick of the same things being brought out every year. Like just the same old gar- recycled garbage. They need to, things need to change. I mean, they did it with Tomb Raider, didn't they? They, they, made, they, they completely reinvented Tomb Raider, and that was a huge. That, that was wow. Well, I don't know if it was a huge hit, but it was very. I loved it. I loved what they did. Completely mm. changed it around. So yeah. We want new things. We want something original. We don't want the same thing. Same drivel every year, you know. So good for you, Ubisoft. Well done. Mm. Yeah. Is that everything then? Is it? I'd chill? say so, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for watching. If you've managed to do the whole 30, 36 minutes coming up to, well done. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll see you again um, next week or the week after, depending on how we feel. <laughs> um, please subscribe and like, even if you think, wow. Well, you like it anyway or dislike mm. it put comments in yeah put comments do on what you, like. you want us to talk about do it through about. YouTube not Facebook this isn't a Facebook channel this is a YouTube channel we put the link on for you to go onto YouTube so you know uh, even if you're not bothered about that video subscribe anyway it makes us look really good yeah you know gets us we're desperate, noticed we're desperate are we, we really though are. no we don't care <laughs> we just wanted to have a chat really yeah. but, and just, you know like I say I tend to take over a little bit with these, but it's good to, you know, you, you, you're talking about something that I know very little about, really. So, yeah. yeah. Hopefully I've taught you a few things. You have. Um, you have. If I had more time in the world, I'd play a lot of these things uh, on a regular... But well, all that's all I'd do. I'd just stick to... If, I had, if, 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 if technology was that good, I'd stick wires in my head and i will just play them. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't move. Like Perhaps they can sort something out, for, you know. <laughs> that's a part of my life. <laughs> but anyway um, alright sorry okay uh, anyway we've been rambling on about a goodbye for a while so um, alright uh, as we said earlier subscribe like the video if you liked it uh, leave a comment down below what you want us to talk about what you want to see or still on the channel and uh, yeah see you in the next video goodbye Bye.